Most fucking Kato, man. What anniversary? Yeah, who is that? Some new shit I'm working on. What, what's the artist? Uh, Zoe Dollars. Oh, yeah. Fuck Zoe. Yeah, he's hard. He just sent me this hook. Super hard. What's up, man? Chilling, man. What the fuck you been up to, man? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I ain't, I hadn't talked to Kato in years. Yeah, it's like pe twenty pe years. People don't know this, but we probably haven't seen each other or talked since fucking twenty eighteen. Yeah, twenty. I, you know, I talked to this nigga one time about taxes. That was <laughs> that was what was that during the pandemic? Yeah, yeah. But since twenty eighteen, man, I ain't talked to this nigga, man. How how the pandemic been treating you, man? Uh, surprisingly pretty good. I can't even front. I can't even front. Yeah? Yeah. You just been like, well, what you been doing? Like, recording? I've been chilling, man. Recording. Sleeping. Fuck. <laughs> That's it, Sleep. nigga. A nap god. Sleep. Slap bitches. That's about <laughs> it, man. The usual. Typical me. Doing the same old shit, man. Slapping bitches, sleeping, and recording. <laughs> I, you know what? The pandemic, real talk, the pandemic got me back producing. I saw that. That's what it know, did. I don't know where I saw that, but I saw that you were you were making beats. Yeah, it got me back. Got me back. Uh, got me back on my beat, God shit. How the how the beats sounding? They coming Crash. along. They coming along, man. Pretty soon, man. I'm gonna be the next TikTok star, nigga. <laughs> I'm gonna have my little bitch on there rapping bars, nigga. I might, you know I, mean? I might start rapping. Fuck it. Niggas gonna be hitting the camera like this. Good luck with that. Yeah, man. You know, I'm trying to go. Yo, I'm trying to really go viral, man. On, you really should get get on TikTok, though. I feel like, I feel like, uh, you would you would make some funny shit for TikTok. You know what? I got on TikTok. I didn't even stay on that motherfucker. I probably was on there for like a week and I got off and I didn't have nothing against TikTok. It was just that I didn't really have a, um, I didn't really have a specific thing that I felt I could do yeah. consistently to take advantage. You know what I'm saying? I feel that people look at other people's shit and they, they'll jump on there and think it's, it's go. I, I feel like you gotta have something uniform and something creative, um, to make people more engaged. So I didn't want to like play myself and just, just be trying any fucking thing. I want to make sure I went on there and had something solid before I just went straight head first on that shit. No, I feel you. I mean, but I, but I feel like your fans would just want to see you like making music, like just showing them yeah like, music shit. You know? Yeah, I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna get back on this TikTok shit, man. Um, I just like I said, I, I put it I put it to the side and just. I, yeah, you know, I do shit that I should, like you say, should be seen on TikTok. Like you say, making music, fucking rapping, making beats. I just don't get on TikTok. Yeah, no, I feel you. Um, but I, I think it's a dope fucking platform. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, yo, I I gotta say, man, like so many comments and DMs, even to this day, that I get are like, yo. I uh, I used to I'm a big fan of you and Jaron. I would bump all your your albums, My Grandma's Basement, Free Basin, like that was my shit back in the day. And those are still like I see a ton of those types of comments. Like, yeah, that shit crazy. I get the same shit over here. Like I get the when you and Kato doing some shit, a uh, bunch yeah. of, and it, it, they still they still they still want that shit. How how likely do you think uh? Funk Volume reunion is at this point now that Damon and, and Hop made up. You know what, bro? I don't even want to like. Would you I even do put it? it out there? Because I've been talking. I don't. I don't think it's impossible. I think it's very possible, but I don't think. I think everybody kind of like on their own shit, and I think once. I, I don't know, man. I don't. I, I don't even want to like. Because it's, it's been so much other shit 
I have to holler at you off the fucking uh, this shit to to really let you know the, the real the full thing. But I don't I don't think it's impossible. I think it's definitely possible. Yeah, I think a tour. Could I think be a tour would be possible. And I think I think uh, like a, a track, a, a track instead of like trying to focus on a whole fucking funk volume project. I think a track and a tour would be a dope first step. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree with you. Um, yeah, man. I mean, that was a fucking, that was like a moment. Looking back, like what, how do you feel about thinking back on all the, on the funk volume shit? You know what, bro? I feel, I think, I feel sad about this shit sometimes. And I mean, it don't, it's been so long now. I've been through so many different emotions. I went through sad. I went through anger. Looking back, my main thing, I wish we would have all handled this shit a lot different because, you know, we had some super dope platforms. And it took me, it took me leaving Funk Volume and journeying out on my own to see how dope of a platform we had and see how, you know, we, we had it, we had everything there, man. Um, so it's sad if I, if I could redo it, I would probably just take more advantage of the situation and would have been a little bit more vocal about, you know, um, the bullshit that was going on. And when I say the bullshit, I mean just, I wish I would have stepped in and been more of a, play more of a leader position instead of like not giving a fuck. And I definitely wish I was in this state of mind. You know, I don't really drink like that no more. You know how I was, man. I was just getting fucked up and partying. That's all I really gave a fuck about. Yep. So I would do that over. I would do it sober. That's the main thing. Yeah. So you don't you don't drink at all anymore, or it's just like I I went through a phase where I didn't drink at all, and then now I like I'll drink in moderation. Blue moon, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't get fucked up like that no more. I want to. I ain't go front. <laughs> I want to get fucked up, but I I, I don't because it's it's just bad. It's bad for business, man. You you know what I'm saying? It's it's not it's it's not really it's not healthy. It's not fucking. It's not productive. You get yourself fucked up. Get yourself in shitty situations. And yeah. uh, but yeah, I do. I would love to get fucked up right now and fucking <laughs> shit. Nah, I remember the fucking torn with you, bro. When you were, when you were at your peak of uh, getting fucked up was. Oh yeah, Kato. You know that shit was a whole different. <laughs> <laughs> You were on some okay, I told shit. Kato through a table. You, yeah, you threw me through a table. What, what other fucked up shit did you do? Uh, damn. I mean, I could write a whole book about all the fucked up shit. I mean, I got fucked up too. It was like, yeah. it, it, it all just kind of like it fed into each other, and it just never ended up good. Nah, I remember Kato got so fucked up one time off of edibles. He never ate edibles before. Was that your first time eating an edible? Nah, that was my second or third time, and I haven't done it since. Yeah, this nigga, he, we almost missed the whole fucking show because he was puking consistently and he couldn't stop throwing up. And this nigga was saying he was seeing, like, boats in the toilet or some crazy shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> fucking faded. I never seen Kato like, yo, no, 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 the... <laughs> I got, I ain't even gonna, it, it's on my IG somewhere, but I'm gonna put it back out. Yo, <laughs> first, I seen, <laughs> I seen Kato was on my grandma's basement tour. You know, Kato drank, but he don't drink like that. So he was trying to really get fucked up with us. And he got so fucking faded. This nigga was laid out on the elevator. He was spitting on everybody. He was wild in the, I was, Kato was in fair fucking form. Like, this nigga was, yo. I don't, I, don't, know. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember what I drank that night, but that shit had me fucked. Like this, I remember that because it was on video. That I remember. Uh, I think that was my. Was that my first tour with you? That was your first tour. This nigga Kato stayed in the back of the van most of the time. He was clipping bonsai. He nigga had a bonsai. <laughs> Real talk, like Mr. Yagi had bonsai. This nigga had a. I'm not even being racist. He literally had a fucking bonsai tree. <laughs> Yo, chill, 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 chill. Get bonsai tree. Chill. Um, oh, man. Yeah, I remember the tour, 
man, the touring was probably, I mean, we had a lot of memories on tour, but that was like, it was hard, bro. Like just traveling that many cities, like back to back in a small ass passenger van. Like, yeah. People don't know that touring, um, touring is fun, but touring is not fun. Touring is exhausting. The fun part of the touring is talking to the fans, performing and doing all that shit. But outside of that, touring is, is can be fucking excruciating. Yeah. Like super screw like the tour, like the like you say the tra the tra especially if you're not comfortable with you traveling, bunch of niggas on top of niggas, um, you're in a bullshit van, you're going to state to state, um, you're not eating healthy. It, it's uh, it can be a bitch. Yeah, shit was definitely a bitch. Um, so what you've been doing recently, man? Just re recording? Like, what's the plans for for the music shit? That's been it, man. I've just been kind of, I've been thinking about putting another project out. You know what it is, man? It's that, you know how all this shit I've been through, bro. And it's just like, I just got to a point where I was like, I just, I just, it's like two things in music. You could chase, and I'm always trying to chase progression, but you get to a point that sometimes it's like, what's important to you? And for now, you know how I was, man. I was going fucking crazy. I got a lot of other personal shit that was happening. Um, yeah. So for me, I had to take like a step back and kind of just kind of get myself together mentally first before I kind of went back full fucking throttle. So, but I never wanted to miss a beat. So, you know, I, I still put content out, do shit like that and um, still produce, still, still doing this shit. About to get back on the road for like a, a small little uh, run real quick next month. But um, I just had to get mentally right, man. Like that's if you're not mentally stable doing this shit, yeah, you can drive yourself fucking crazy. So for me, the 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 the, the taking a step back, just trying to get more healthy, the cutting back on the drinking and the drugs and shit, um, and surrounding myself with just you know the motherfuckers I was around with, man. I was around the same. I love everybody to death, but around niggas that was. Seemed like they didn't really give a fuck. Um, yeah. So I just took a step back, man, and just really concentrated on mentally getting myself together. So that's really the main priority for me. Like, if I ain't mentally right, I can't, I can't function. You know what I'm saying? I can't do shit. So now I feel like I'm in a better place. So I didn't want to put no album out in 2020 neither because of the fucking pandemic. It just felt like just a bad vibe in the air. So I yeah. might put one out this month, but... I still just put content out just to just to keep my fans fucking engaged and and don't miss a beat with the music. That's really it. Yeah. Do you feel pressure to like put put out music? I mean, you're you're independent now, like totally, right? I did, but now I don't. I, I don't. That's that's what I love about now. It's like I just I do what the fuck I want to do when I want to do it, and it's like as long as I can uh, take care of my kids and, and and live my lifestyle that I like, I'm good. Like. But no, nah, I used to feel that pressure. And that pressure sometimes can drive you fucking crazy, bro. You know how that shit is, man. You feel that pressure. You you feel like you ain't you ain't where you want to be, or you ain't accomplished what you really want. You know, and we 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 have some accolades and shit, but it still is an artist, and it's just in general as a person that you want to win. You always feel like you want more. Nah, this ain't it. I need I need to get here. I need there. So that drive is always in me, but I just don't let it fuck me up you know what i'm saying right, right. just try to stay try to stay focused man like and when i say focus really like i keep saying i hate to sound like a fucking uh fucking what is it self-help book but i just really stay focused on mentally sharpening my mind really bro yeah making sure you're good yeah yeah that's about yeah. but yeah i'm definitely probably gonna put some shit out this year i'm still putting music out you know we did, i did the bully freestyle shit i did a bunch of singles i just hadn't dropped a full project and you know when you're doing a project you want to be in project mode i just hadn't really been in that project like yo put some fucking music out just drop it i ain't got to necessarily be a full project but i don't know we'll see what we'll see what life takes me man um you know like i think i think a lot about when because we've been working together 
forever, right? I mean, back from when I first moved to Atlanta to all the way up to like the funk volume shit. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of crazy to think about like how far we went um, from like those basement shows in Atlanta at fucking like, or at Lenny's, you know, performing in front of like 10 fucking people all the way to like touring around the country and doing shows and then you get in the double XL freshman cover. Um, is there anything that you would have done like differently around that time? Like when we were when we were touring heavily and when the double XL shit popped off? I would have probably just put out more music, man. I like I said the man and I keep I hate saying the same thing. I would have put out more music, did less partying and just concentrated more so on the business aspect, man, I would, um, that's the main thing I would do over, um, but at the same time, I don't like to look back like that at shit, because I think things happen, I ain't one of the niggas that think things happen for a reason, I think things happen to put you on a certain path, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it could be a positive path, but it could be a negative path, but for me, it's been a positive path, so I can't, I don't really, I don't really don't have no regrets, bro, I think, I mean, if I could, I just put out more music. That's about it, to be honest. Yeah. That's really it. Just put out more content, and um, I think being in a sober space would have allowed me to take more advantage of the opportunities that I had at that time. Because I think that was the main thing that held me back was just being fucked up all the time, man. If I wasn't fucked up all the time, I would have been more coherent. And 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 was that like a was that for you was that like a coping thing like yeah where, how, how did that start it, it was a coping thing because um i low-key kind of you know how you, i remember back in the day niggas don't know, I don't know if you put it out there i don't mean put the shit out there but niggas i know you had the the whole social anxiety thing yeah so i didn't necessarily have it that bad but i did have it when it would come to doing shows and especially like when shit started popping after the the schizo shit, like, and we would do meet and greets, and it was just like, oh, shit. Sometimes it would be overwhelming, and yeah. so, you know, you have a little drink here, pop a little pill here to kind of get yourself cool, and then the shit just ended up, once I was able to perform fucked up, it was like, oh, shit. So it, it started off as a coping thing, it's, and, and, and plus trying to handle, like, you know, we went from fucking working bullshit nine to fives to oh, shit, now we don't have to work a job. We really taking care of ourselves with music. And um, so and, and so you had to deal with that in my home life. I was married at the time. At the time, two kids. So it was like trying to balance all of that shit was kind of hard. So I leaned on the substance to kind of help cope with a lot of the other shit. Right. But dealing with the fact of like, you know, I want to be here. You're dealing with all that shit. Um, you're dealing with your own insecurities about your own, you know how we are. We be in our own heads. Everybody got their own insecurities regardless of what it is. So that shit just kind of shut my head, you know, shut the, shut the bullshit in my head off. So that's really what it was. Yeah, I'm, I remember being at the meet and greets and uh, you would just like keep telling me like, I just felt the anxiety like sky high. Like I could feel it. You didn't even have to say shit, but I could tell from your body language and the shit that you were just like saying, I know what was going through your head. And I just knew the anxiety was sky high. And then, you know, that was followed by just pounding down a a, a bottle of goose. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, shot after shot. So. Yep. Yeah. Um, did the did the pandemic kind of help you in a way to to slow slow down? Hold up, your your shit. I don't know if this is my phone or your phone. Again, you kind of broke up. Say that again. I said, did the pandemic kind of help you slow down a little bit and and just like get your shit together? I think the pandemic, and I think after um the Yuck Food Tour, man. Um, mm -hmm. after the first run of the Yuck Food Tour, um and. You didn't do the second run. Um, yeah. Second run made me slow down because you know me and Jason, we kind of got into some shit, and um, it was I don't know. I think just yeah, I would I would say 
the pandemic and the Yuck Food Tour kind of made me take a, 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 a what is it, a, a look at my own shit and kind of say, yo, I can't go on. Like and plus, so when I did the third run, I just like made sure like everybody around me has to be sober. I don't want nobody who drank or even who smoked to be on the road with me. Um, so I kind of just started putting myself around people who necessarily didn't have those same vices or they did have those same vices and they learned how to cope. So I kind of had people around me that helped me, um, helped me maneuver in a fucking more positive way. So, and you know, that it is a snowflake, man. Like I said, I'm not a fucking angel. Of course I have my slip ups here and there, but it's nothing like, you know, it's nothing like I used to be at all. Right. Yeah. So yeah, in the pan and plus the pandemic, I, I was like, you know what? The pandemic, I, I think I probably almost went a full year without one drink. And you know, I went out one time and had a drink, but it was like that's it. But other than that, yeah, man, um the pandemic did kind of kind of help too. So I say Have you talked to you still talk to Dizzy and Hop and the Swiss? Yeah, you know what's crazy? I talked the the most I talked to Hop and Dane the most. I hadn't talked to Dizzy in a while. Actually, I'd have. I see whenever Dizzy in Atlanta, you know, we always link up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wiz, I just got, it was crazy, bro, as I just got back when I put a song out called Savage in the Sanctuary. But before that, I was in LA. This was right before the pandemic. And I was like, man, because you know, Swizz was the one person I hadn't talked to. I didn't talk to Swizz since the fucking breakup, like since 2015. Actually, the only person I was in contact with was Hop and Dizzy and Dane, but Swizz, like, completely we didn't have any contact. And I just said, fuck it, let me reach out to Swizz, man. And we kind of started talking, and it was like we didn't miss a beat. And, you know, so I, I talked to him every every once in a while. So now um, Swizz is fucking um, back, in the, back in the mix. And he's been driving some dope shit, too, man. I can't even hate on him. He's been driving some fire music. Yeah, I've been seeing that. I've been seeing that. Uh, what so what what are the conversations with with Hop and I mean I can imagine what they are with Hop but like what what are the conversations y'all are having? I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. It's crazy to see everybody seem to have grown, bro, in a in a in a positive way. Like Hop has been the Hop that I experienced now is a different Hop than I experienced back in. You know when we had the fucking shit popping. Hop is Hop is kind of becoming a an adult, and I don't mean no disrespect by that. He's he's kind of manning up with his shit, man. And I can see the man growing, and he's starting to take accountability and of some of his actions and shit. And he's starting to, you know, realize um, certain shit. So he's actually in a way better place. This Hopson now is a is a is a dope Hopson. I think everybody kind of gets to that point, man, to where it's like, yo, we. You just want to better yourself, man. And like I said, I think that mental shit, you realize you can't better yourself first. You can't better yourself until you work on the mind. So it's weird to see that shit that everybody was kind of on that same shit, even from Swizz to Dizzy. It seemed like everybody is trying to, you know, I think everyone is in a mental good space to do some more funk volume shit. But it's just that I think everyone else got so much of their own shit going on it is just finding the time the dedication and, and doing it yeah i mean I, yeah i think um i mean i think just the fact that i think it was hop that reached out to dame right to like kind of reconcile and, yeah i mean that 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 alone just like shows the growth and maturity from where they were before to like I, to that point, I never thought that that would happen. I never in a million years would thought that shit would happen. And it's weird to see them two niggas sit down and to see Hop kind of, you know, take on responsibility of this shit. Like I, I was shocked. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was 100. percent I knew they was, I knew they had spoke because Hop told me that they kind of would, would would back cordial and shit. But I didn't I didn't expect that shit to go down like that. Like the document, not the documentary, the uh, podcast. Yes, yeah. So it, it it was dope to see both of them in a in a in a good space, bro. Yeah. What what about you, man? What the fuck Kato been up to, man? Fucking making hits, bro. Yeah, I see you, man. Shit, I see this thing. Trying to get a couple more of these uh Bill, hey, man, some billboard shit set, man. I need some shits in my room. No, I'll, I'll 
I'll send you the plug. I'll let send you me the know. plug, man. Yeah, you need to get a couple of your own. Yeah, I know, man. I need some in this bitch, man. You know what's crazy is that when, like, I didn't even realize at the time, right, when, when we put our albums out, like, I wasn't paying attention to the charts and, like, the numbers and, like, any of that shit. But, like, looking back, it was like, our shit did really well independently. <laughs> like, and it's only now that I realized, like, shit, we charted on fucking number one on, on some billboard charts when we put our shit out. Yeah, I didn't pay that shit attention either. But people would tell me, you know, the managers and shit would say that shit. I was like, well, I don't know what the fuck that mean. I guess, I guess it's a good thing. Yeah. But now, now it's like, yeah, you look back like, damn, like, shit. I mean, we did we did a lot of dope shit, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's definitely crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's wild to think about. Yeah. Uh, what were you I will say that I, I do miss that aspect of it, too. You know, shout out to, you know, the people I'm, I, you know, it's me and my homie, uh, Max, kind of doing shit. But I do miss that aspect, man. Like, back in the day, it was... It was me, you, Mike, Blake. It was just figuring shit out, but at the same time having fun. You know, Spitz was around. And, um, it was... It was just fun. It was fun, yeah. We didn't really stress too much about shit. We were just putting shit out and doing shows and just fucking enjoying this shit, man. I miss that camaraderie of, of, of the team and everybody just, like, not giving a fuck, just on some... Let's just have fun with this shit. Yeah. Um, I think once it got to the point where, like, you know, obviously there's budgets, there's labels, there's people involved, and, like, there's just more pressure, and it, it kind of takes away from the fun a little bit. You know, I still have fun yeah. making music, but it, it didn't feel like it did back then when no. we were just, like, fucking around, linking up at Mike's house, like, listening to music and, like, shooting fucking stupid-ass videos. <laughs> like, yeah. you know? Shout out to J Cap, motherfucker on Cobra Con now. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> that nigga went from directing videos to being a villain on Cobra Con. For anyone that doesn't know, J Cap directed Schizo. He directed Razor Blades and Steak Knives. What else? Half ounce, quarter pound, billion Half bucks. Ounce. Yeah. Um, I'm missing one more he did. I think he did like a total maybe five videos. But Schizo was like the big one that kind of took off. And we literally was just fucking just having... We were running and gunning, like guerrilla style, just like shooting. <laughs> like yeah. no no permits, no permission. We just shot it. Yeah. And all this shit, um, like when I was at Razor Blades and State, all Schizo, we was in Kato's fucking apartment. Um, that was really Kato studying for his motherfucking midterms. Yo, what the fuck were you even in college for? Uh, I was at Georgia State, right? Yeah, yeah. I was studying, um, I was studying marketing. Yeah, this nigga really was studying for his midterms. Yo, what you, well, shout out to Kato's sister, man. What your sister up to, man? She's the one who got away. <laughs> the one who got away. She's married, bro. She's in Seattle. I know. She, she got, got a kid. kid. She's, she's doing her own thing. Man, shout out to your sister, man. She's still doing the uh, art shit. With, yeah. the, with the with the leggings and shit. Yeah, well, she's not doing that anymore. She has, like, this whole different brand of, like, hair accessories and fucking, you know, I, you know what she does. Shout out to Kato's sister, man. <laughs> you don't show enough love, man. Yo, shout out We're thinking about writing a book together. Oh, that'd be fire, man. I saw Chief Jinx on here, man. Shout out to fucking Jinx. Jinx know what it was, too, man. Jinx is a... I mean, we, we was on roll with Ritz and Snow and shit. Jinx is a... Uh, Jinx saw us wilding the fuck out nonstop. Looking looking for BB and T's. <laughs> hey, y'all got <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Jinx. Um Damn man, I feel like there's so much more we could talk about. Uh like one thing I will say one thing I will say is like I feel like it's so important to have a good team, you know, Super important. like to have the right people around you who not just like our good influences, but like are professional and know what the fuck they're doing. That's I, feel the, like, 
I was uh, on, I remember I was talking, I think Dame, he did something on his on his show. And he had, I came on and I was just talking, we was talking about touring. That is the most important thing. You got to look at this shit like a business and you got to have professional people. Like, not just necessarily, like you say, not just people that are, um, you know, like-minded and positive. You also need the professional aspect of this shit too. Like you have to have, or you'll look back and, and, and regret it money-wise. You'll look back at shit like, oh shit. You gotta, you gotta have, you gotta treat this shit like a real business. Like regardless of if it's rapping and you having fun, it's a business at the end of the fucking day. And you gotta treat it like that. Make sure you motherfuckers file your taxes. Uh, and how you how are you on your taxes, man? You got your shit straight? I'm straight, bro. Super straight? Yeah. You don't owe no money? Nah. Uh, fuck you. You know, us us Asians are good with numbers, so like my accountant my accountant's on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh same nigga, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, man. That he did my he got me straight, man. Shout out to the homie, man. He got me right. I yeah. still owe the government a bunch of fucking money, but hey. Uh, those those taxes will get you, man, once you once you're uh 1099 like you know you you got to figure that shit out because if you don't come tax season they're gonna hit you with a big ass a big hey. ass uh oh number. ah yeah my yeah i got a number that's so fucking ridiculous that i feel like throwing up every time i think about it <laughs> but, but yeah shut, yeah you, but yeah y'all if y'all listening man take this shit serious man like Make sure you 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 have your business shit together. And make sure you you study this shit and, and, and know what you're getting into. Study the contracts. Um, and and, and just know like it, it's a fucking business at the end of the day. So make sure you got your shit straight. Is that something you felt felt like you didn't learn until after Funk Volume? Like, I I you know what it is. I knew, but I didn't know. I didn't pay it as much attention as I should have because I would I was this guy. I would. I had the lawyer, so I was like, if my lawyer says cool, fuck it, I'm I'm with it. Right. And not no disrespect to to my lawyer, but then there were cases to where um situations I would look back at once I started opening my eyes and I was like, yo, this really wasn't that good of a fucking deal in right. Maybe I ain't even go for that. I ain't gonna put my lawyer out there, but um No, nah, but I think it's like it's like in more cases than not, it's a conversation that should be had about certain business, not just like a quick sign off or not just the yes or no. It's like, all right, what's the what's the best option to move forward? Or like, how do we need to handle this situation? Do we need to negotiate? Like, you know, it's I think it's more of a dialogue in a lot of cases than just yeah. like trusting someone to make the decisions for you, you know? And I think that was that is a mistake on anybody's. I think you should definitely, if it's things you don't understand, read up on it. And if you still don't understand it, don't just let your lawyer, and not saying my lawyer didn't make good decisions. I'm just saying it in the sense of like, you want to be just as involved as your lawyer. Um, because, you know, you may have a difference in opinion. They may not necessarily saying it's just the lawyer definitely has your best interest, but you guys can maybe disagree at times, you know? So I'm saying, not to say that they don't have your best interest, I'm just saying to say like, it may be a situation where they may think is your best interest and you may feel different. Right. You have to know how, you have to understand what you're signing and you gotta understand how to, how to get some sort of understanding of what the fuck you signing. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's true. So that's that's one of the big big uh, gems I tell people, man. Make sure you know that paperwork, and it's a lot of shit, and it's a lot of language you don't understand. Like you know how lawyers write up shit; these contracts are written in so many different languages. And when I say languages, I mean the way it's written is yeah. it may be written in a form that you may is kind of confusing. It's not it's not some shit that the average fucking person is going to sit down on one glance and completely understand what the fuck you get into. So. Especially music contracts, like that yeah. shit is on a whole different level of comprehension, you know? Completely, yeah, completely. I, I, you got to go back, and if, it's, if this shit you don't know, you got to 
do the research on it and or ask just ask and, and and just don't be ashamed to say this i'll say this shit like if it's some shit i don't know and someone's explaining i'll say yo explain this shit to me like you were talking to a fucking retard and if you have to fucking have it broken down to you like that for you to understand it then fuck it man it's worth it then then, then just saying i'm just gonna sign some shit and then because once you sign some shit you you're going to come you're going as an artist you're going there is going to become a time where you become conscious and you're going to start thinking about your money and then shit's going to start adding up and then sometimes something's not going to smell right and you're going to start backtracking and you're going to realize that damn this was actually in your contract this is what you signed off on right fuck i signed that why don't i you know, why don't i get an understanding because you like what, schizo yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that 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 was that was oh. our first and might be maybe our oh. worst decision that that we made it is absolute selling worst. selling the rights to schizo. The and worst decision. You know what's so crazy? And our because it was a song that was so fucking outlandish at the time, and we kind of were thinking. You know, we was at the time around a bunch of like industry people, and they were. You know, looking at you, this this will never get on the radio. So, but also, Mike was like, "Yo, this is a good deal. You guys should take this." <laughs> hey, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> but you know what? To say, not even that to, say, to Mike. Say this: if you listen to that song, and this was, I was not, I didn't know about the internet world like that. Like, I didn't know like that whole funk volume shit and how the internet world and and, and fans on the, and and shit. Like, I was just so mainstream. I was thinking about mainstream. So. In hindsight, you would hear some shit like that if you was completely oblivious to the internet. You would think like, "Oh yeah, this shit's not mainstream, not going to do anything." But then you shot just we shot ourselves in the fucking foot because it's like, "Yo, no, it's, it's going to do, it's going to do something." Yeah, and and you know, I guess to our credit, this was before really the age of like social media being what it is today, where like everyone's on fucking TikTok and Instagram. It wasn't like that. We didn't. I don't even think we had Instagram. <laughs> no, we didn't, no, Instagram didn't even exist then. Instagram did not exist when we were making these decisions. So it was like YouTube and Facebook. And it was like, cool, but like nothing, music wasn't going viral on these platforms no. like it is today. Uh -huh. So we I were think like- the most, the most we had internet wise was maybe blogs were starting to bubble at that time. Yeah, blogs were popping. So like premiering your video on certain blogs was a thing. But like, you know, for Schizo, we were just thinking, well, this shit isn't like commercially friendly. So, you know, we'll take the, I can't even remember how much we sold it for. I think it was just a couple thousand dollars. And yeah, yeah it was, uh, yeah, yeah, it was horrible. And they paid for the video. Yeah, and they paid for the video, which was like, what? A thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. It probably was fifteen hundred at the most, maybe twelve. That's crazy, and that ended up <laughs> becoming like one of our biggest songs. Yeah. So yeah, that was a. I look back at that shit like, fuck. Why the fuck? That was the worst. Thing. But then again, you know, if it wasn't for that song, who knows what? You know, that song yeah. and that video opened a lot of doors for us. So. Who who knows? That's true. That's true. It did. It's sort of like we had to take some cock in the ass to. Whoa, 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 whoa! Chill, chill, chill. <laughs> That's you. That's you. <laughs> Kato, Kato had to lube himself up a little bit, you know, <laughs> get somewhere. Took one for the team. <laughs> yeah, took, uh, nah. Actually, they didn't even lube the nigga up. They just went straight raw. <laughs> no pre. Yo, chill. This is a family <laughs> show, man. <laughs> hey, um, his family doing the same shit. <laughs> they know what it's like. Yo, speaking of family, I saw, uh, you know, this so pretty record. I, I think one of the dopest moments was when I saw that Bob Saget did the oh, so pretty challenge. How did that shit come about, man? I was I was kind of late. I, I I was I was late to the party on seeing it bubble. How did how did that did you, did you just like do some shit on TikTok and that chick just fucking start rapping on it and it just blew up? Yeah, pretty much. I posted the beat on TikTok. A bunch of people duetted to it. Probably about two months after I posted it, 
I started seeing a lot of people like commenting on Rayon, her, her name's Rayana Maria. I started seeing a lot of people comment on her video duet. And then it just fucking, it like blew up. And then everyone started doing that trend to it. We didn't even make Who that. Who didn't even do that? No, nah, we didn't even do that. Like that wasn't our thing. Like people just. That was organic shit that just, just spread it. Yeah, TikTok just took it and ran with it. And it just grew from there. And uh, yeah, now she's signed. Like her life changed. Tyga jumped on the remix. <laughs> yeah, I just saw that. That's crazy, bro. Shit went fucking nuts after that. That's fucking crazy. Is she, what is she doing? Did you, um, is she like your artist or she's kind of doing her own thing? Not so. She's, uh, she's signed now to uh, Victor Victor, which is under Universal, um, which is Steven Victor's label. So she's signed, you know, she's working on her EP right now. Yeah, she, she gonna let you throw some more in the chamber? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the plan. Yeah. That's the plan. That's, that's fucking super dope, man. And she's, she's from Australia? Yeah, she's from Melbourne. That's you fucking, been, you've been I, there before, right? Yeah, yeah, shout out to Australia, man. I fuck with them heavy. They, they show us so much love. I, Everybody, Melbourne, every, every spot, Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, Fucking uh, Gold Coast, they show us so much fucking love, bro. So you ain't never get to go to the Australian shits with us, did you? Nah, I didn't. I was mad because I remember you telling me how dope Australia shows were. And I was like this. Yeah. They really fuck with us heavy over there, man. I don't know what it is, but they fuck with us heavy. Like every show we was doing was was sold out. Like it was crazy, bro. The Australia vibe is is, is insane. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. Yeah. So that's dope, bro. Shout out to y'all with that shit, man. That's super dope. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, my last question, and I might get to some like fan questions too, but I feel like we've kind of talked about this a little bit before. Do you ever feel like you were too lyrical? Um, eh, I nah, I used. You know what? I I used to, and then I. I just did what I what I was feeling at the time. I try not to, you know, and I try not to look back at shit. There was a time where I did, I would say probably like right before Funk Volume ended, there was a time where I was just feeling like, damn, what am I doing to like, for my shit to not hit mainstream? And I was feeling like I wanted to 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 rewind and not do the, the outlandish shit like I was and not be as lyrical because I wanted that mainstream success. But then I got to a point where I was like, you know what? That's that's where I was at the time. That's that's what I felt like doing. And I think that's what makes the best artist is when you do what you really feel in your heart versus kind of chasing something to be positive. And I say nothing's not wrong with that, but I think shit just comes better. Like if you find a niche that's, that works for you and you like doing it, I think that is the that is the magic behind it is that, cause that's what's gonna keep the magic of the shit going is that you're doing something genuine from your fucking heart. Even if it's, if it's some mainstream shit, if you, if you make songs about popping pussy and that's the shit you do the best, then fuck it, keep, keep it going. If you feel happy doing that shit and, it, and you like it, keep fucking doing it, fuck it. But no, I, I don't look back. I'm going to be honest with you. I've actually toned. I know people won't even believe it, but I actually purposely toned some. I could have been more lyrical. Yeah. So I toned a lot of shit down, to be honest with you. I know. I remember, I remember you know, you being at the crib and we'd be like recording a song. And I specifically remember like one of us saying like yo we should we should like tone this down or not tone this down but like simplify this a little bit like yeah like yeah. leave a little bit more room to breathe here or like shorten up the words here you know just like simple shit to to kind of not go as crazy with the with the bars yeah yeah no it would, it would be a lot of that we would go back listen to shit and um and and Fucking, um, you know, kind of. I guess, I guess, like you say, kind of, you know, cut some of the fat from the shit, shit out. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, 
but I wasn't, I could have been way more lyrical. Um, and I know people hear my shit and they's like, yo, this is, I, I'm be honest with y'all. I'm not, I'm not even giving you motherfuckers. I'm not even going full tart. I'm just like, I'll do some shit. And I'm still conscious to that point. So sometimes like, I ain't gonna get too intricate. I'm like, and that's saying a lot from sometimes I can get too intricate and I'm still thinking, you know, I'm toning it down. So, uh, nah, fuck it. All right, this is a fan question from VDZ. What have you been listening to lately? Anyone on your radar? Like, who, who are you Who are you playing recently? You know me, man. Kato, you know the type of shit I listen to. Oh, you awesome. still, on, still on the the classic Jaron Benton uh, playlist? Yeah. Hey, how do I remove this? Because I can't see my, I can't see shit. I just see her question. Oh, there we go. All right, yeah. No, people, I listen to everything. So... But I think a lot of people don't know. I listen to probably a lot more indie rock in a bunch of like um, old school, 70, 60, fucking classic rock shit, soul shit. Um, K don't know. He's been on many long drives with me. Sure. I tortured him with the music I listen to. So the shit, I still be listening to the same old shit like um. Uh, I remember, I remember being in a fucking small ass passenger van, touring the country, listening to goddamn Marilyn Manson, and then jump into David Bowie, and then going to Wu Tang Clan, and then going back to some like indie rock shit. Yeah. Like your your fucking musical, your playlist is all over the goddamn place. It 100% is. Like, literally, you would hear an Arcade Fire song playing, then you would hear a fucking Wu-Tang song next, or a fucking a Young Thug song, and then you would hear a fucking David Bowie. Yeah, facts. It, it's yeah. every... I don't really have... There's no artist necessarily that I listen to. I, I would be lying if I tell everybody that there's a particular rap artist. I honestly... I'm kind of a little bit out of the rap fucking loop. I'm going to be real with y'all. Uh, I, I mean, I hear shit and I like shit, but I don't like keep up with it. Like I hear shit like that shit hard. Who the fuck is this? And then I'll, I'll, you know, I don't really keep up with the shit like how I did when I was younger. Like you know, I'll get into a rap artist and just you know get into their shit. I don't really get into them like that. And no, so I, don't, I don't have nobody. I still listen to a bunch of fucking indie fucking rock shit, man. Bunch of old MGMT shit, old fucking Radiohead. Um, bunch of RK, bunch of fuck still bumping Bowie. Uh, that's me. I be listening to a bunch of weird. Shit. Yep. Um, let me see. Oh, and I listen to a bunch of motherfucking eighties, a bunch of old school new wave, eighty shit like the. Yeah, cute. you do. I remember. I yeah. remember that. I have the fuck. I go on tour and you hear the fucking Cure playing, or you hear motherfucking uh, 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 fucking uh, damn, I'm fucking lost right now. But you hear a bunch of old school eighty shit. You hear some Flock of Seagulls or some shit like that playing. No, so, yeah, I think it was Flock of Seagulls that you showed me the video for, and I was like, "What the oh, fuck is this?" Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. No, that actually that was that was a group that. It was a, it's an artist, actually he's a dope artist. He out of LA, it was, it was LA Pre and this guy named Connor McCosh, I'm butchering his name, Connor McCosh, I forget his fucking name, but they got a group together and they called it Soft Hair. Oh, Soft Hair. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. Shout out yeah. to Soft Hair. Yeah, shout out to motherfucking Soft Hair. And listen, you know, the motherfuckers like the old school, I listen to a bunch of like the block, I still listen to fucking Block Party Silent Alarm album. I still listen to like I remember the black kids party for a bunch of fucking silly fucking shit. Man. Pure shit. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I listen to a bunch of old school rap shit. So yeah. I listen to a lot of new niggas too. I just don't really keep up with the niggas to know they shit like that. I'm trying to think it was the last shit I listened to. It was some nigga that had a song. I forget his name. It was like some song with Money Bag Yo, the nigga from Detroit. Um, and I just listen to, and I listen to a lot of just my my friends and shit. Like, right. I listen to a lot of a lot of a lot of my friends shit. That's about it, bro. Yeah. Um. Last question: At what point in time did you quit your nine to five or outside job, 
able to survive off music and how. So they asked both of us that. You want to go first? Yeah. No, I remember. I remember you. you no, Spitzwell got me a job at Arrow. Yo, hey, people don't know this, that me, Cato, and there's another guy, uh, his name was Spitzwell. We work, we were exterminators. We worked at Arrow Exterminators. And Cato fell through a motherfucking roof. Um, on my first, Put to a fucking... my, my first day on the job, I didn't know shit about like, you this, know, I'm the, I'm you know, the worst. When you're in the attic, you gotta walk on the motherfucking, uh, the the smash. yeah. He thought yeah. he could walk on the fucking insulation. And this nigga's leg went straight through the motherfucking goddamn fucking ceiling. Ceiling of this lady's crib. But, she, yeah. but credit to her, she was super cool about it. But uh, what's his name? Um, who was the dude that, that I was with? Uh, the Jinx was his name? No, not Jinx. Yeah, Jinx. Yeah. Yeah, Jinx. <laughs> Jinx was laughing his ass like he wouldn't he wouldn't uh he wouldn't let that down for a long time and he told everyone in the office like it was it was a big uh joke around the office that I fell through someone's fucking roof. Yeah, yeah. This nigga didn't know you can't just walk on insulation. Um yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. We were exterminators and before that I little little people I went to I was like a fucking I was working in the dental field. I was a dental motherfucking assistant. And then I got that job because I was working for some oral surgeon. And at the time, I fucking, my car broke down. I was supposed to do that job temporary. And then it just ended up, I just didn't never leave. And shit started popping off with the, the schizo shit started popping off. And um, at the time, I was told the story before, it was like a lot of labels and shit looking at us. Um, Def Jam was one. Um, so Def Jam wanted to sign. And I ended up fucking with Funk Volume, and I literally quit my job. And for the, I didn't even have, I, I quit my job on a fucking prayer. I didn't really have that much money to really be quitting a job. Like, I just I quit. Either. Shit just worked out. Like, shit worked out. Like, it was like, oh shit. Because I always said to myself, I was like, fuck it, if I quit a fucking job, I can always get a fucking job. But if I don't pursue this shit, I don't know how many opportunities I'm going to get. Yeah. with this shit so i just said fuck it and just took the gamble and this shit worked out yep yeah so, there was no like set money that it was like yeah i'm so good with money nah i just really honestly took a fucking gamble i think i might have had in the bank i might have had maybe ten, fifteen thousand dollars, and i was like all right fuck it i'm gonna go a year and just i think, I think that's one of the misconceptions about you know, when an artist, quote unquote, gets on or gets signed, like they got all this money and they're good and like they don't, you know, they're set. Right. But I think that's that's an illusion. Like, you, yeah, you got to you got to work after you get signed. Like that's when the real work begins. Yeah. To really to really take advantage of all the opportunities. So and I wish I did start off with like some of these niggas. I'd be here niggas getting these million dollar deals and shit. Yeah, that, that, I would have. I was really, and I'm pretty sure it's the same case with you. Like, we had an uncomfortable amount of money to quit a job and like do it full time. Like, it was not nah. gamble. Yeah. But I will say this shit though, man. Uh, one of the things I always made sure is that I wasn't one of those rappers that had. I had a family, so I, I didn't want to be that rapper that gambled with my family. Like, I had to make sure shit was taken care of. So I will say this: don't think that. Don't think that you don't be too big for a fucking job. If you got to work a job and take care of your family, do that. But what I did when any free time I had, I was making music. I was either with Cato or at the homie Spitz or, or, you know, we was, I would get off work, make sure my kids straight after that. If it's, if I have to sacrifice and be up till three in the fucking to five o'clock in the morning, go to work the next day, I would do it. Cause that was the time I had. And I was like, fuck it. I, I want this shit. So yeah. Whatever I got to do, I had to do it. But I did make sure to prioritize taking care of my fucking family while doing this. I didn't want to be that nigga that's like, yo, I ain't got no job. Fucking, I can't feed my kids. But yeah. if you responsibilities, take care of your fucking responsibilities. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't feel like 
you got to fucking quit your goddamn job to be a rapper. You necessarily don't. Just use your time. Um, just be productive with your time. Yeah, you can do both. Yeah. Um, I remember Kato, Kato was going to quit rapping at one point. I had to talk his ass back into it. He's not rap rapping. He's going to quit and shit. He's like, man. Um, I, used to, I remember I used to pep talk this motherfucker into not quitting so many times. He's like, man, I don't think this shit for me, man. I'm going to. He was, he was to open up a karate dojo. No bullshit. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I was yeah. considering it. He's like, man, I'm just gonna gonna really concentrate on the karate shit. I was like, man, <laughs> fuck, I'm tripping, dog. Just keep going, nigga. This shit gonna pop off. I used to, I used to be Gus. What's the nigga name with Mike? Like, I used to be Gus with that nigga. Like, started giving them pep talks to, to pop him up. He's like, nah, man, I'm gonna just fucking kick fucking wood all day. <laughs> and then, he he would still get back, he'll get back at it, but yeah, it, it's a struggle, man. Like if you're going through some shit, it's a struggle, but just keep going. That's the best advice I can give anybody. Just keep fucking going, even even if shit might have popped off for you, and then it's, you seem like shit's not at how it used to be. Keep fucking going. Just don't stop. I I, I don't stop, man. I just I just keep going, and I think once you keep going and you just just. You know, put the positive thoughts. I hate to sound like that fucking that guru type. You know, positive vibe. You know, just 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 be positive, man, and 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 just keep just keep fucking going. Keep applying yourself, man. But the shit is hard. I I I I I feel y'all pain, man. Shit hard. Now sometimes you're like, man, I don't know if this shit for me. Just keep going. You'll know if it's not. Just keep going. Yep. You never know. Like, look at this nigga. You got the biggest TikTok song. Never know, nigga. Just what you say? You just put a fucking beat out there. I know. It's, know. And it's and it's all it's it's all things. Shit happens when you least expect it too. It's like when you when you just put your head down and work and you don't quit and give up and bitch and make up excuses along the way. Shit just happens, man. Like it happens yeah. when you least expect it. Like I didn't expect schizo to be our our most popping song ever like you that's know. why we gave it away we yeah that's why, that's why we sold it like we yeah. didn't expect that shit i didn't expect this tiktok shit to take off the way it did but you know it's always when you least expect it bro so i always tell people the same thing it's just like you you're only fucking yourself if you quit and you make up facts. excuses you know yeah facts it's gonna be hard man it's gonna be fucking hard you go have those days where you feel like it's not for you or you have those days when you like you don't know if you're gonna make it shit's gonna seem questionable but you just gotta keep keep fighting man keep fucking going and keep going and keep going like don't stop fuck it fight that yeah. feeling i have days like that but i know for a fact it's in my head i know i have those negative days but then i have to like tell myself like bro you don't entertain the negative shit that's in your head. That's what the energy is there for. It's negative energy is designed to keep you in the negative place and to keep you in the negative, you know, mentality. That's it. That is what the fucking energy is for. That's why you have positive and you have negative. It's yeah. for and then if you understand that is what's happening and you have the power to combat that shit with positive thinking and just just kind of, you know, take a breath and just know this shit gonna be all right. That's you're gonna be cool. Yep, yep. Shout out to Rich from anywhere. He said, you put in the work, though, fam, which is true. You got to also do the work. That's the other part of it. That's enough. Yeah, you got to put in the work. Just keep going. Keep putting the fucking work. That's crazy. All my, I can't even see the fucking messages. The shit just stopped scrolling for some weird reason. Oh. Well, shit, man. Um, anything else you want to say? Anything else you want to shout out? Any music coming up? Uh, Shasha, I'm dropping. I'm gonna drop a track tomorrow. Um, shout out the homie Ace did it, Ace Taylor, um, and another producer. I apologize. I'm gonna shout you out on the IG because I forgot the other producer's name. Dropping some shit tomorrow. Uh, I I will possibly be dropping a project, a full length project this year for sure. Um, that's about it. Make sure y'all. I'm going back on the road. Check out my Instagram to see the dates. I wish I could tell you. I don't fucking know. Look at the dates in the in the cities. Going back on the road. Just 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 getting out there for shits and giggles. These were shows that I was supposed to do before the pandemic, but when the pandemic hit, we had to cancel them. So so we 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 you know we getting it back up. Hopefully hopefully this shit will be popping and and that's it. And other than that, man, I'm just keeping moving, man. And 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 
Keep it going, man. Uh, shout out to Kato, man. Uh, man, this nigga got a lot of fucking catching up to do. I'm a holler at this nigga. Uh, yeah, let's make some music, man. Yeah, man, let's go, man. Shout out to fucking Kato. And uh, yeah, that's it, man. Everybody have a fucking blessed night, man. Everybody be safe, man. Don't give up on fucking dreams. Jaron Benton, appreciate you. Yeah.